Wave. Wave.
Or die. <laughs>
I think the the big inspiration for Tube and for me when I was first thinking of the idea is it was kind of a uh, a reaction to the fighting genre of games that was going on at the time, and I saw a, an enormous amount of violent activity in in video games at the time, and I. And I, I swore to myself there must be a way to create a game that's fun to play and can be and can earn a lot of money but can be good clean fun for kids to play. Well, I think it was a good it was a fun game and, and a lot of people enjoyed it, but it doesn't it still didn't have the appeal that the violent games had. It was it's just amazing. It's uh it's very difficult to come up with a concept that you would think that people would have fun playing as in a sort of a strategic way a kind of a, in, a, in, a, in a challenging way in terms of the control, to challenge yourself as a designer, to come up with the innovative new environments and approaches, and, um, and still um, the kids are drawn toward these, these, violent, uh, these violent tendencies. Uh, later on I went to do Primal Rage, which was a, which was a big hit because it had a lot of blood in it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was, it's, it's a reaction uh, to to kind of these these uh, these violent games, and I thought that there was a way to, that we could make a game that would be good, clean fun for kids, and and I think that uh, Tubin was a definitely a cult hit. There there was a good, you know, strong you know following of the players that would always play it and would always and loved it and would play it all the way through, uh, all, but it didn't have the broad base appeal that the, that, the, that some of the other games did. We built a tile editor, and, and we had pieces of, of river, of rapids, of shoreline, and the designer would sit and click through tiles one at a time and basically lay them down right in the system and build himself a, a level and connect all the pieces, uh, kind of like magic squares, and you know, put it all together, and, and uh, all of a sudden you have a level. And then you could go and you could add objects on top of that. You could add uh, snakes or alligators or cans. hippos and cans, and you could just pop those in the play field at different spots and, and try to level on uh, almost immediately. If you go through and you destroy each individual piece of brush or thorns that are out there in the, in the, in the water, um, eventually what will pop up is one of the letters of Tubin will come out and it will float around. You can, go and, you can go and collect it. And so at the end of the game, you try to spell out Tubin in letters, uh, sort of as a, it's kind of a, you know, a, a game on top of a game. It's, it's, it's not necessary to do that, but it's... What uh, was the reward for that? Um, Is there any? Well, no, yeah, it came out and spelled it out for you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you got a lot of money, you got a lot of points. If you go slow on tube and the gator would come out. And, he was called the Gator for a reason. It's because he he was put in there Keeps to pushing. keep pushing you ahead. It was just again, Tubin was a waiting game. When you when you and you and we, we found that the, what players would do is they would just sit there and wait for just the right period of time, and then really try to get through the gate or or to, or to go past an obstacle. And in order to kind of prod them a little bit, we put the Gator out there. And uh, if you don't go through the gates, they'll come out and bite you and sort of prod you along and get you, get you going. So the, so the trick of Tubin is to take a, take, a, take a nice pace and always go through the gates and he will, he will never bother you, ever. One of the novel things about Tubin is we did have, we did have a pretty decent current map and depending on the animation of the water, the water would actually pull you down at different rates depending upon the graphic that we were displaying underneath. The character at the time too, and I don't think that that kind of thing had been done previously, especially not with water, at least. But uh, there's always been this aspect that uh, you have a game and you have a play, f you have a player and you have a play field, and you have obstacles or enemies in the play field. But the play field itself doesn't really interact with you; it sort of sits there. And uh, this was kind of a, a new approach to have the actual play field as part of the uh, of the game as well, to, to get the actual background. Um, doing something to the player. It was the incredible <laughs> J11 chip, oh, yeah. uh, which was a deck-based uh, processor, 
PDP, PDP 11, 11 family, family chip, chip right? Down you, version you, of that. you had that chip, didn't you? And um, we, we, uh, pro we programmed in a language called Bliss, Bliss. which was anything but. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, was, it, was quite a, it was quite a beast. 